Gabriel could not believe he had agreed to this, as the makeup artist fiddled with his suit, making him look as presentable as possible. He supposed he should be grateful he had not been slammed in makeup. A fate Nish and Pista had not been able to avoid. While their faces were not susceptible to pimples, boils and other blemishes, lacking the sweat glands on most of their bodies, the producers had still decided that the two ladies needed to look their very best. Producers after the lawyer, there is no lower form of life, thought Gabriel. Nish took it all in her stride, though Gabriel had a sneaking suspicion she did not care how she looked on camera. Pista, however, was thoroughly enjoying the attention, even if she had not yet fully warmed up the strangers around her. Sitting alongside the camera crew were Ayala and her maybe girlfriend, Risotti. Gabriel wasn't exactly sure what their relationship was. He supposed it was one of those holiday romances he had read about. Everlaw had come along for moral support. Gabriel had mentioned several times that he found it uncomfortable, and Risotti had come along after Everlaw had practically begged Gabriel to allow it. The Ponot Clild had called him Romantic Gold, though he wasn't entirely sure why. The Etu Lana had nearly collapsed when she visited Evelo in the hospital, the shock of meeting the most famous man on the planet having been a little too much for her, which Gabriel could understand. He had fought two of the deadliest predators in the galaxy. What he did not get was why they made her fawn all over Evelo. It had been nothing but random chance that they met one another, yet Rizzotti had not been able to keep quiet about how Evelo knew Gabriel Rathlou. In the end, he simply chalked it all up to aliens doing alien things and moved on. It was not worth losing any sleep over. Evelo looked at Gabriel and raised her thumb and ring finger, which was also her pinky finger. For the Pollock Cleald, this was the equivalent of a thumbs up. To Gabriel, it was like he was attending a fresh metal concert. Mr. Radlew, are you ready? The presenter asked. They were a Hun Nunie, which Gabriel only knew because his cabin on the transport here had been next to one. Driven by curiosity that day and the total lack of anything meaningful to do, he had looked them up. Native to the world of Ionsu, famous for its near constant rain, nearly all life upon it was covered in highly hydrophobic skin, bark, fur, feathers, shells, or anything else that covered their bodies. The presenter was a woman, which meant she had not yet reached middle age. She was tall and spindly, having similar proportions to stick insects, but rather than having an exoskeleton, she was covered in impossibly smooth almost plastic-like skin. Four bulbous, jelly-filled eyes sat not in front or to the sides, but on top of her head. Her pupil was able to swivel in them like a human head inside a glass dome. It all sounded rather disgusting, but Gabriel found he did not care. The alien was so alien-looking that it did not affect him in the slightest. Fine. The sooner we get this over with, the better, he replied, taking in a deep breath. The director pulled Gabriel away from his thoughts as he approached the set. The title guards began to play and said, We're live in five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, this is Dawn with Minigrad News. I am a trolley, and the top stories this week. Tritium prices rise to a five-year high this week, causing an increase in the cost of interplanetary flights and imports, the presenter said. Yenisari signed a trade deal with the Resolu Ortis, signaling an improvement in their relations. Scientists have detected radio signals from sector RS-4563. Could we soon be introducing a new race to the galactic community? And finally, we talk to Gabriel Radlu, the deadliest being on Minigrad, and the Nish Tolum Walnut Tofanda, the mother of the young girl who fell into the Vettoru enclosure yesterday, they added. Each segment was interspersed with clips of the various events. Gabriel could not deny that the replay of the footage of his fight and being called the deadliest being made him squirm. A small segment played on the screens behind him, and Juratoli turned to look at Nish and Gabriel. Pissa had lost much of her enthusiasm and was now deeply shy, bringing her head into Nish's wings. We start with the heroic rescue of Pista, a defunded child by Gabriel Radlu of Humanity. They join us in the studio. Hello Gabriel, Nish and Pista, thank you for agreeing to come here, the presenter said, and the two responded just as they had practiced. It's a pleasure to be here, Uratoli, said Gabriel. His tone flat and monotonous, though to everyone else present, he seemed to have broken out in song. Likewise, said Nish, more enthusiastically than Gabriel had. Now, as the event has been recorded no less than 36 times, there is little need to go over what happened, so instead I will ask, what was going through your head when you jumped the electrified fence? Uratoli asked, leaning closer, her oversized head bobbing slightly. 
I was hoping that the fall would not break my legs, responded Gabriel, running through one of the many answers Iwalu and Risotti had helped him come up with the night before. The presenter let out a retching sound. It sounded painful, but Gabriel assumed they were just laughing. Uitoli did not appear in distress. Several of the crew made other laughing sounds. Gabriel did not think it was that funny. Still retching, Uitoli looked at Nish. Now I know you've had a harrowing experience. I don't mean to press you, but what was it like when Mr. Rattlew emerged from the brush like a charging possum? A shock, followed by relief and fear, answered Nish. Fear? asked the presenter, raising her head slightly. I was afraid that someone else had fallen into the paddock. Even after I realised Gabriel was a human, I was still concerned that he might not make it out alive, Nish explained. Pierce had ruffled her wings and settled back down. Yes, though despite the terrifying experience, you seem to have suffered no ill effects, Gabriel, said Uatali, attempting to bring the conversation to a lighter tone. This was a morning show, and people generally did not like downer stories just before they went to work. Quite the contrary, I broke three ribs, bruised over 50% of my body, sprained my leg, and pulled several muscles. I am in some pain as we speak, replied Gabriel. Everyone went silent, even Nish, and especially Evelo, as that had not been one of their pre-prepared responses. What made the statement even more jarring was the extremely formal way Gabriel had said it, as if he was a lawyer in a courtroom discussing a parking violation. Which had been something else Evelo had noticed about him. Gabriel was not still learning galactic basic, he was fluent, as were many humans. After all, being able to talk to aliens, even in a post-contact society, was highly appealing. Yet despite this, he stuck to the form of speech most fluent people did not use. Are you okay? Do you require help? Asked Stuart Tolly. The concern was not feigned. To the presenter, Gabriel was a hero, and to know that he was suffering was unsettling. No, I can handle it. I will recover and the pain will pass in time. Gabriel explained matter-of-factly, like he was describing the weather. Well, I know you people are tough, but to see it firsthand is something else, Uatoli said, shuffling for her notes. Gabriel had a sneaking suspicion they were blank, and that they only existed to give the newsroom an illusion of old-time professionalism. You must be very proud of what you accomplished yesterday, said the presenter, finally regaining her train of thought. Proud? No, I am not proud, replied Gabriel. Why? asked the presenter. She had clearly not been expecting this as a response. I do not regret what I did, and if given the choice, I would do it again. But the Vettoru and the Carnadon were beautiful, majestic creatures. They were not evil, they just did what they did. And now they are dead because of me, he explained. Does that put your concerns to rest? Fessel said, pointing at the screen. Mr. Radlow is not a vicious thug, as you seem to think. Prove positive. Fessel was the liaison between Reshu Zoo and Reshu City. The two were inextricably linked, both created to support the other. Most of his days were spent tending to the animals, but he was sent straight to the mayor's office when things got serious. Walulut hissed in frustration. He was the head keeper in charge of the more dangerous residents of the central section of Reshu Zoo, and I wanted to see Gabriel prosecuted for the damages he had caused. Unfortunately, that little stunt had made it all but impossible. Prosenna Freire. Trini is currently undergoing major surgery. We can't let a guest just kill our animals like this, stated Willowit. Possenefri extended her tongue and rubbed her forehead with the flexible cartilaginous tips that her species used in place of arms and hands. She had not run for mayor to deal with things like this. She had become mayor so that she could open a few hospitals, a park or two, and fix that stream lamp that had been flashing outside her house for nine months. We can't punish him. The entire planet will be up in arms. Besides, even if the public were on our side, the law is not. That woman Nish could sue the zoo for all it's worth. You know how strict the safety laws are, Bosonefri stated. She was beginning to think that merging a biological park with an incorporated place had not been the best idea. Not that any of that mattered. Ewolu Notis Tex had made a decision over a thousand years ago. There was no going back. Vessel croaked in agreement. They did not like that some of their star attractions were dead, but the simple fact is, it was them or the girl. And Fessel was glad it had been the girl. I understand. You love those animals. We care about them too. You're just emotional now, and the vets say Trini's jaw will heal in time. She's a tough old girl, Fessel said, trying his best to show Willut that no one here thought his care for the Carnadon, and Vettoru was foolish. Fessel, you were employed at Reshu Zoo the last time someone got hurt. What did you do then? asked Polisefri. Though the Serpent Woman was not much of a leader, she was at least humble enough to know when someone was more qualified than her. Vessel remembered it well. A feger had escaped his lagoon and ambushed a couple along a local river. While no one had died, but one of them lost a leg. 
Fessor could remember how grateful he had been that it had not escalated further, though he supposed that had been of little comfort to the Utrefoe. Well, we should do what we did last time. First pay off the affected parties, somewhere along the lines of 50,000 credits each, including the girl, explained Fessor. Possum Nefri sighed. Secondly, we award the human the text loop, added Fessor. The other two looked at Fessor. That was undoubtedly a significant award. It was the highest one a civilian could achieve. Technically, it was only available for Minograd citizens, but there was no law against giving it to a foreigner. And the final part will be the most expensive. We've just lost face with the planet. In a month, the entire galaxy. No one is going to want to bring their children somewhere they could be eaten. I know, I sure as hell don't, stated Vessel. How much? asked Possenefri, closing her eyes. Millions at least, possibly tens of millions for five years at least, answered Vessel. What for exactly? inquired Wellut. For a massive security overhaul, of course, stated Fessel. We will need consultants. I recommend we reach out to Susan Deathworlds. They have to deal with creatures even more deadly than the Conidon. I would also consider asking Mr. Rattlew about it as well. Why, he's just a civilian, isn't he? Asked Possenefri, looking towards the screen. Nish was describing what she had done since arriving here. It wasn't particularly interesting. True, but he jumped into the enclosure, which meant he felt the need to do it. I would not be surprised if he noticed the lack of a security feature they regularly use on Earth, answered Vesul. We don't need his help, stated Willard, glancing at the interview, palpable contempt radiating from them. Maybe not, but even if he had no insights to share, it could only help us in the PR department, countered Vesul. Possenefri rubbed her forehead once more. The sooner this whole thing was resolved, the better. She tapped her PDA. She made several clicking sounds, speaking in her native language. A response came back, and she took up the other gathered. I have asked. A peon to send requests to Mr. Radlu and Ms. Nish to meet with us at their earliest convenience, she explained. Still looking at the screen, Boss Nefri said, He is right. Well, Lord, we got lucky this time. I am dreading the bill, but there is no way in the dreadful sky that we can save face without going through our equipment, procedures, and infrastructure with a sieve. Looking to Vessel, she could not but help notice the look of surprise on his face. Something the matter? she asked. No, quite the opposite. I was expecting you to find me more on this. Most of the other mayors loathe to spend any more money than absolutely necessary, saying that it would hurt their chances for re-election, explained Vassal. Even Nurta put on more of a shocker than you, he added. If Possenefri's memory served her well, Nurta had been the mayor during the last event. I may not be the most enthusiastic mayor in the galaxy, but I like to imagine that I have just enough self-respect to put the needs of the people above my own. She replied. Now we have another question from a viewer, one on the lighter side of things, Eratoli said, looking at her PDA. Are Gabriel and Nish together? the presenter asked. We are sitting together right now, said Gabriel, wondering if some were listening to this over the radio. Eratoli rushed again and said, No, what the viewer means is, are you partners? she asked. Gabriel shook his head and responded, we only met each other a few days ago, and with everything that has happened, we've had no time. As far as I'm aware, no desire to start a business. Heratoli did not know if Mr. Radley was making fun of them, or he was indeed this ignorant. She was leaning towards the latter, as Nish seemed just as indifferent as he was. I will try again. What the viewer is asking is, are you a Mish in a romantic relationship? Explained Heratoli. Both Nish and Gabriel looked at one another, then back at the presenter and stated matter-of-factly, and in near perfect unison, no.